Hi family, I hope you all are doing well today. Um, so there's a few things I need to share with you guys. Um, one, you know what, is the year 23 coded in our DNA? Um, I'll get to that in a second. And I was going to do a video regarding all the reasons why I think 23 is a great year for a rapture, but Aaron from God a Minute just did it. So I'm going to tell you to go watch his video. It's pretty good. Um, I think you guys will enjoy it. I'm going to add a couple of things. So I'm not going to give you a whole list. And I'm also going to tell you some more stuff about 17 and share our personal story. So stick around for a moment. You guys might enjoy this. Um, so the DNA, let's start with that. The fact that there's 23 pairs of chromosomes, you know, you you lose something around the house and you look for it for hours and hours and here it's under your nose the whole entire time. I'm like, oh my goodness, is that one of those things? You think about human anatomy and men and women having 24 ribs. Well, God removed one from Adam, which would be 23. Although they say we all still have 24. I'm just saying God took one out. There's 23. So... I, I can't help but pay attention. And yes, I'm dorky like that. I can't help it. Um, Adam and Eve had 23 daughters. Um, I, I mentioned before Leviticus in 23 talks about the Feast of Trumpets and how I keep saying the number 17. If you guys watch uh, Watchman Adam yesterday, he did a video talking about 144 unexplained UFO sightings over the course of 17 years. <laughs> like I told you, it won't leave me. It's in my face all the time. Um, you know, the, the 23rd Psalm is like the, the one that's quoted the most in the Bible. And, um, you know, in Jeremiah 23, it talks about how God will uh, gather his remnant. And in Jeremiah 23, 23, he says, Am I a God who is near, declares the Lord, and not a God far off? I can't, you know what I mean? You just got to look. It, and all throughout the Bible, just like Aaron was saying uh, from God in it, um, it's, it's like where two and three are gathered together. Two and three, two and three. It, it's all over the place. Um, what else did I want to say about it? Uh, the Earth's axis is on, like, the tilt is like 23 degrees. Um, okay, 17. We, we know 17 is overcome in victory, and this year, on the Feast of Trumpets, it, um, the last day of Feast of Trumpets should be the 17th. And then right after that, we have that SDG where they have 17 goals, where, where they're going to sign uh, a covenant with many for seven years. So we can't ignore that. There are 17 muscles in the human tongue. There are 17 muscles needed to make a smile. Um, and, and this is just a fun fact. I did not know that Ohio, because like I was born and raised in Ohio, and I had moved down south for some 20 some years, but back in Ohio, um, was the 17th state <laughs> um, in the U.S. It became a state in 1803. Uh, did you know the White House is located on 17th Street um, Northwest? There are 17 ways to write 17 as the sum of primes. And God is mathematical genius. I love it. 17 is the seventh prime number that can be divided by itself in one. In Daniel, seven beasts have seven heads and ten horns for a total of 17. Psalm 83 verses 6 to 11 lists 17 enemies of Israel. Um, there are 17 Old Testament books uh, list in the book of James. Joseph, I mentioned this part in one of my other videos. Joseph had shared his dream 
uh, when he was 17, but he was also sold at 17. And he reunited with his father 17 years after that. So that's another fun fact. Um, and I, I want to share, um, first I want to say a thank you. Um, I had a dear brother in Christ meet a need that I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I really didn't. Um, some of you guys know that, you know, I, I can't work because of my health. For the, the past two years, I've been trying to do this disability thing, and I've spent all of my savings. I've lived off of it for the past two years. So, you know, now it's not to where I have a lawyer and, you know, just waiting because there's no reason for them not to approve it. Um, but you still, you know, you're at the mercy of that, and it, and it sucks. And it sucks. Um, I am a person, I, I started working when I was in elementary school. Like I was babysitting and, you know, um, you know, I had like work permits through high school. I, I've worked my whole entire life. And sadly, you know, of course I have some people that want to say, okay, I, I'm lazy. No, far from it. Um, people, that's just who I am. It, and it's, uh, you know, like my, my doctor said, I, you know, I, I grieve. I, I grieve on the health that I once had, you know, because I was at the gym at 4.30 in the morning every day. I went to work. After work, I hiked. I worked the dogs, you know, and I was always outside and enjoying life, you know, being active. And now I can't be in the sun because the sun causes flare-ups. There's days that I can't walk. Um, you know, in, in the pain, just the pain alone, you know, so, you know, I go to the hospital every two weeks for infusions and, um, doing the best that I possibly can with what I have. I've had people leave comments saying, don't let my art become my art be my idol. I can't paint every day because sometimes my health, the pain and everything overtakes it. But art is like the only thing I have, like therapy, you know, um, and studying the word, you know, the, those are what I have. And people want to act like, well, you shouldn't even have that. And then I've had things like, oh, did God tell you to ask for money to share the gospel. No, that's not why I started this channel. And the idea of monetizing the channel or even having a PayPal um, donation was suggested by my brothers and sisters because of my health. And that was hard for me because, you know, I, we're all flesh. I, I have pride. And as someone that's been on her own since she was 17, like I graduated when I was 17, that was my great escape, you know, from my house. Um, so I, I wasn't even 18. I, I didn't even want to age after 17. I just wanted to, to flee, <laughs> you know. Again, it's weird. That's 17 all over again. <laughs> but what I'm saying is w when you've had to spend your whole life counting on yourself and, you know, being let down by others, there is a pride thing. Like, you don't want to ask for anything. Um, a lot of people don't realize, like, I've been homeless. I, I've, I've been at the very, very bottom of everything. And I've, I've had to climb my way up over and over and over again, only to get knocked down, you know. So th this is what it is. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sharing this to, for sympathy or anything else. But, but to hopefully stop people from judging because you do not know what's going on in someone's life. Um, people may have alternative mo motives for other things. The only thing I'm trying to do is exist until the Lord comes. I don't need anything. Um, I'm very thankful that I have a roof over my head, you know, but yeah, Life happens. I still have bills to pay, and I, I try to do the best that I possibly can, you know, and make everything work. So, um, for those that want to judge, I just wanted to, you guys to know, look, my intention is not to share the gospel for money. 
not at all, not in the least. And I'm not, never going to ask anybody for money. But I will say thank you to the brother that, you know, just fed me. So, you know, thank you. You have no idea how um, humbling that is, you know, and how much it means because it wasn't even our prayer. I was praying like, Lord, I got all these appointments. I get, you know, because this week I'll drive like four hours just for doctors and therapy. Um, you know, and you still got to eat. So you, all of these things happen over and over again. So anyways, I want to say thank you to my brother that, that for the bottom of my heart that I could, I could cry all over again. With that being said, um, I want to read a prayer out of the Bible. Um, that I just, for some reason, it's just one that I can't help but read over and over again this week. Um, it's found in John, I want to say it's John 14, or is it 17? Oh, it's 17. <laughs> John, I should know better. It's John 17. So, Father, this is um, when Jesus looked up to heaven to pray. In John 17, 1, beginning in John 17, 1. And Father, the hour has come to glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you, for you granted him with authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all of those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on the earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. And then Jesus prays for his disciples in verse 6. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed you, believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by the, that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth of your word, that by the truth, your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them, I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. And in verse 20, 20, Jesus prays for the future believers. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, through the world does not know you. I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known 
in order that they that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. I can't say how many times I read this this week, but I think it's such a, an awesome prayer for the time being, for these times, you know. For those, um, I'm going to share the gospel. It's found in 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 1 through 4. You know, Jesus died on the cross according to... The scripture was dead and buried and rose again the third day according to scripture. And it's hearing that gospel. It's what Jesus did on the cross, dying for all of our sins so that way we could live again and be with him. There's no works. Um, in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, um, I, I know a lot of people want to say, well, faith without works is dead. The works thing is not a salvation thing. We can only get to the Father through Jesus. It's a free gift of God, lest, lest any man should boast. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. Sorry. Um, with that said, I also want to share a couple of things because I don't want to confuse people. Um, like my other video, I was talking about rewards and salvation and the difference. I want to repeat the difference again. Um, salvation, as soon as we call upon the Lord as our Savior, we are saved. We can't lose it. It's a free gift. There, The Holy Spirit indwells in us, and there are good deeds that we do that will be tested and tried through the fire. And if they endure, there is full reward for those things. Let's say you hear the word, and we often refer to like hearing the word and then you end up back in the world as backslidden. You know, can you lose reward? Absolutely. Can you get back on the right path? Absolutely. You know, while we're waiting, it's not too late to get on the right path. You know, if you fall down, you're not losing your salvation. We're just, again, talking about things that you, rewards that you could lose. So, and, and God tells us, and it's not me, God tells us. In the word, you know, not everyone um, will enter the kingdom of heaven, you know, but you can be saved from the fire. So what we have to do, I mean, we're, we're to follow and enter through the narrow gate. And that's hard. Like addiction and things like that to overcome. Our flesh, we struggle with this. It's not something that we can do on our own. But if your heart Kurt's intent is to follow God and be obedient. He's going to help you, you know? And guess what? If you fall down, get back up, you know? You haven't lost unless you just decide to give up, you know? Get back up and follow. Um, we're not perfect. We're going to fall short every day. I don't want you to think because you, you fall down that you're not saved or anything like that, or you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. God looks at your heart, you know, your intent, your desire to, to want to be with him and to follow him. He knows what we go through. So I want you to be encouraged. I don't want you to doubt your salvation. Um, sorry. I'm waiting for insurance adjuster because of the roof, so I can't turn off my phone. I apologize. But like I said, I, I don't want you guys to think that it's possible for you to lose your salvation because you can't. No one can snatch you out of the Father's hands. Not even yourself. So, and you remember, it, like all the 90, like 99 sheep, you know, once lost, he will go after. So he's had to come after me a lot. And... But the most important thing is to get back on track. So with that said, please share the gospel. Be kind to one another. You know, love each other as much as you can. And uh, I love you guys. Be blessed.